Okay, I am here to walk you through the Albert Spinestein assignment. Okay, so if you're watching this video, you are completing the pre-activity. If you are here to complete the pre-activity, you should have already completed one thing. That is this, the background knowledge. So what you should have completed, um, I am about to show you. So hold on one second. You should have already completed this, the background knowledge. That means taking the skeleton, writing down all the bones that were on the back, including a little key here so you remember which is which, and then coloring the correct uh, bones, the correct color. Here's where people sometimes make a mistake. See the clavicle and the scapula, those should be blue. The coxal bones, the hip bones, those should be blue. Otherwise, down the center um, is axial, okay? All right, so you should have completed and submitted that, and now you are on the pre-activity. Remember, you must, absolutely must, get a 100% on the pre-activity in order to continue. So take your time, retake if you need to, all right? So this is what I'm guiding you through, completion of the actual activity. So after I finish this, you will see my sample, okay? So let's see where you could get some ideas. So my sample that I'm building is called Albert Spinestein, okay? If you are having trouble thinking of a skeleton pun, you can go to this site right here, and it's going to give you a whole lot of suggestions that might, you know, fit, like there's, you know, Pelvis Presley, Napoleon Bonaparte, okay? Uh, Liam Neeson, okay? Whole ton of suggestions. If you click here, there are going to be two samples from previous years where we used a skeleton cutout instead of pasta, so it doesn't quite match exactly. But here's a note right here. You cannot use any of these three names. You can't use Albert Spinstein, Mr. Funny Bones, or Count Scapula. Remember the key I showed you already? Um, let's look at it again real quick. This one right here, this key, you should be using uh, to complete the activity, okay? So you're going to get a sheet of construction paper. Choose a color that fits your scene. I picked black, you'll see in a little bit, um, because I think it matches with the white hair of Albert Einstein, okay? Um, you're going to write your names on the construction paper. It has to be on the bottom right. Super important. Get an index card, write your names and class period on the index card. And then you're gonna get one of my pencil cases. And the pencil cases I have for you are clear. So you're gonna put that index card so the name and class period is facing out so they're actually visible. Then you're gonna to go to the front table and get two or three of each kind of pasta so that you can kind of decide um, how to build your skeleton. So let me just show you the kinds of pasta that will be available to you. Okay, here are our kinds of pasta we have. Uh, let me just use this to kind of move them around so you can see. We have bow ties. You'll have pieces of lasagna noodles. We'll have elbows. We'll have this. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. We, maybe you know. We have penne. Uh, and then we have, uh, sometimes these are called ditalini, but this brand just calls them rings. Then we have three kinds of long pasta of different thickness. So we have fettuccine we have angel hair, and then we have regular spaghetti. Okay, so nine different kinds of pasta that you're gonna be able to use. You can break them, shape them however you want, um, but there you go, these are the kinds of pasta you're gonna be able to use. Okay, and the next direction says, without gluing, you're gonna build all the pieces of the axial skeleton. So using this key as your guide, you're gonna build a representation of all of those red bones, okay? So all the way down the center line. Remember, not the clavicle um, and not the coxal bones, but you're gonna build the axial skeleton. Once you have the axial skeleton arranged how you want it, then you're going to glue it down, okay? And uh, I will demonstrate it um, later, but what I recommend is that you use tweezers. So I'll show you again when I get to the next part. All right, after you finish gluing down the axial skeleton, you're gonna build the legs next. Don't forget the hips, the coxal bones, and the patellas. And you're gonna decide how you want the legs posed, and then once you're happy, glue those down. 
Now, without gluing, build the arms. And that's where I am in my demonstration. So let me show you what I have, okay? So here I have mine. You can see my little arm and hand pieces are kind of rolling around still. So it's obvious that they are not, in fact, glued down. However, the legs, the axial skeleton, those are all glued down. So you're going to have your pieces, get them ready to glue. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is move these pieces out of the way. So here's what I wanted to show you for moving pieces around. Um, these are the ones that I have at home at school. We have different ones, but we're going to use tweezers. That is going to make our jobs that much easier. So I'm going to put some glue here. Okay, for the scapula and the clavicle. But what I want to do is look really quickly at this picture. Okay, to show you. So you can see we have ribs. You can see how the clavicle comes across over that top rib and also comes across the scapula. So I need to put the scapula down first and then kind of put that clavicle across. So here I have one of my scapulas. So I'm going to put that down. Here is my other scapula. Okay, I'm going to put that down. All right. Now I'm going to take this, which is my representation for my clavicle, and it's going to kind of go like this. The clavicle is at an angle, all right, so kind of like this, all right, kind of the same on this one. So see how it kind of went to the rib, okay, but then over the scapula. All right, getting a little difficult there. and attaching to the sternum. Okay, that's good enough, okay? So now um, I'm deciding how I want my arms posed. So this one's going down, all right? So then I'm gonna pick up, this is my humerus. I'm gonna attach my humerus. Okay, let me slide these a little bit out of the way. All right, and then I am going to attach my radius and my ulna. Now for this, I used uh, spaghetti and I used uh, the same type. These bones are both roughly the same thickness so I didn't um, alter but again that's not a requirement. Um, then I need my um, carpal bones. So I have some little tiny pieces. Hold on let me grab those. All right, here were those little pieces. These are what I, I am using for my carpal bones. They're actually just pieces of the lasagna noodle. Okay, I use the same thing for my tarsal bones, my ankles, but these are my carpals. And so I'm just putting those pieces right here to represent the carpal bones. All right, and then I just have my hand and, you know, so my metacarpals and my phalanges. So I'm going to attach the metacarpals next. And I used um, the regular spaghetti for the metacarpals. Okay, so like this. All right, now again, notice I am not being 100% obviously anatomically correct because I'm only doing three. If you are so inspired and want to do all five, amazing. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I am just using three. And then I need the um, phalanges, okay, the digits. So you can see, even though, um, except for the thumb, the rest do have um, three parts. Um, I only included two, and I did the same thing um, for the feet, okay? But again, you can do what um, you want. If you do use three, Make sure you only have two for the thumb. The fingers would get three, okay? So um, let me just pause this as I glue down the other arm. Okay, here is my completed Albert Spinestein. Let me talk you through um, the pieces that I have. So here we have the skull or cranium. Uh, for these elbow noodles, we have the mandible, we have the um, cervical vertebrae well, coming across the front, the clavicle on top of behind here, the scapula, the ribs, the sternum down the center. We have the humerus. 
We have the radius and the ulna, the carpal bones, those little ones in the wrist, the metacarpals, and then the phalanges. Again, remember that um, the number of bones, uh, not so much accurate, important in terms of accuracy as well as like the general size and relationship. Also notice my arm should be relatively the same size and I should not have legs that are shorter than the arms, for example. So relative size is important. And then we have the lumbar vertebrae, we have the sacrum and the coccyx. We have the coxal bones, the femur, patella. We have the tibia and the fibula, the tarsal bones, the metatarsals, and then the phalanges, okay? So there is my whole um, Albert Spinstein setup. What I also do want to show you, as you can see in the bottom right, I do in fact have my name. Um, and what I wanna show you, what I have been working on as I've been building is building my key. So what you have to do for this key is put an actual piece of the pasta that you used um, and glue it to make your key. So this is a piece of the lasagna noodle for the coxal, for the skull, that is a piece of a farfalle. For the sternum, that is fettuccine. So you can see I have some missing pieces. So give me a moment while I just fill those in. Also notice, you can tell my name. I'm not gonna be accepting things without your name printed on the assignment. So let me just finish this key. Okay, so let me show you. So I attached down the clavicle, a piece of spaghetti, the humerus, uh, fettuccine, the radius and the ulna are both spaghetti. And then the last thing I had was the scapula, a piece of a lasagna noodle. So you can see my key is 100% complete. I have my um, Albert Spinstein done in terms of the pasta. So now let's go back to the directions. So uh, once you're happy, you glued on the arms, I did add a title to the construction paper. So let's pause here. Okay, so ready, here is my title, Albert Spinstein. Okay, so that's my title, that's my pun. So whatever your pun is, is your title. I decided to write mine like this. Okay, so after I have the title, use markers and colored pencils, complete the scene. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, are you ready? Here is my completed scene. So here we have <laughs> beautiful hair. Uh, what Einstein is probably most famous for, we have a lab bench with a reaction, light bulb, great ideas. Okay, again, remember that my name is at the bottom, and then what I'm going to do is take a picture, and if I did this with my table partner, we're both going to need to submit a picture of this, okay? And um, then let's see, let's look back here, take a picture, submit it. Here are some notes, so pay attention. Before you start building, it's helpful to have a name and a scene decided so you build your skeleton appropriately. Okay, so if you're gonna have your skeleton jumping or throwing, that's gonna matter how you place um, the arms and legs, potentially. At the end of each class period, during cleanup time, so at the five minute mark, most likely, um, that will be announced. At that point, you 100% have to stop gluing, that's it. Any pasta pieces that you need, um, that you're going to be still using, put them into your pencil case. You're going to return the glue, return the scissors, put any pasta you won't need. There's going to be one bin labeled bits and pieces. So other people, including yourself, might just need a small piece of something. Um, so you can check there um, instead of grabbing something from a new box. And then you're going to put your construction paper on the back counter or on the back shelves um, between class periods and put your pencil case with your paper so everything's together. Do not stack your paper on top of another group's paper. Last thing we want is two people's papers getting glued together. That would be terrible. Once you complete that, um, remember we had this key. Okay, so let me show you that again really quickly. Okay, you had this key. All right, here is my name. If I worked with someone, we could have both of our names on this paper. Okay, but we are both going to need to submit a picture of this completed. It's just one sided. Send a picture of this completed um, to the Schoology assignment. Okay, um, so that is that piece. And then there is a post activity, the post activity, as well as this piece of the assignment. So this 
plus the post activity both count as assessment grades. All the other grades count as practice, okay? This one, you're allowed to retake it. You do not have to get 100%, but I would suggest it, but not required. So those, again, are all of the components needed to do the Albert Spinestein activity.